The profusion of life on Earth can be seen from space. This data visualization by NASA represents 20 years worth of measurements taken from multiple satellites to analyze the abundance of life, both on land and in the sea. On land, green areas have abundant plant life, while brown areas have little to no vegetation, and white shows areas covered by snow or ice. In the oceans, the dark blues and purples represent a low level of photosynthetic activity, while the yellows and reds indicate nutrient-rich areas with plenty of chlorophyll. On the whole, then, this map shows the yearly cycle of Earth's biosphere, with different regions at different times alternately pulsing with new growth and dying back through the changing of seasons. Sometimes I wonder, what is it like to be a planet? Not literally, of course. I don't actually believe that the Earth has a conscious awareness, at least not one that has thoughts or feelings or desires similar to what we humans experience as subjective internal sensations. But purely as an imaginative exercise, what would it be like to think on a planetary level and measure time in terms of geologic ages? To broaden our perspective on Earth's history and get a sense of its scale, I think this yearly pulsing of the biosphere might be a good place to start. Let's speed up this visualization of the planet's pulse to make it comparable to a typical human's pulse, roughly 80 beats per minute. Now we're watching one year pass every three quarters of a second, and the cycles of changes brought about by the Earth's motion around the sun tick by very much like a heartbeat, pumping the stuff of life between multiple chambers throughout the course of a cycle and circulating vital nutrients to different regions of the body. If I can be permitted a poetic term to capture this perspective, I'd call this Gaia's perception of time. One Gaian heartbeat is a year to us humans, so after one Gaian minute of these cycles, 80 years have passed, the length of a typical human lifespan. This turns out to be a convenient timescale to understand the history of our planet, as well as our place within that history. For instance, if one Gaian minute covers an entire human lifespan, what are Gaian hours like? Let's take a look at the last 12 of them, starting with the most recent, to get used to this timescale. All of recorded history, every empire and civilization that we know of since the invention of the first writing systems, takes place within the last 5,000 years or so. To Gaia, that's equivalent to about an hour's worth of 80 years per minute heartbeats. Two Gaian hours ago gets us back to around the time of the development of agriculture and the domestication of livestock, shortly after the end of the last glacial period. The first dogs must have been domesticated even earlier, as the earliest remains of genetically modern dogs clearly distinct from wolves show up around three Gaian hours ago, with the initial split from their ancestral wolf populations probably beginning another hour or two before that. The earliest pottery vessels used for cooking and storage show up around four Gaian hours ago in Eastern Asia. Five Gaian hours ago puts us within the last glacial maximum, when ice sheets were at their greatest extent of the last glacial period, and the global average temperature was about 6 degrees Celsius, 11 degrees Fahrenheit, colder than it is today. This is also around the time when humans first show up in North America, the lower sea levels allowing migration across what is now the Bering Strait. Six Gaian hours ago saw the oldest known ceramic figurines and ovens, both found in Central Europe. The earliest evidence for textiles, cloth woven from plant fibers, shows up around seven Gaian hours ago in the form of dyed flax fibers found in what is now the nation of Georgia. And eight Gaian hours ago, at this scale just the length of a typical workday really, is roughly when the Neanderthals disappeared. Before that, our ancestors, known as early modern humans, coexisted with them and a variety of other human subspecies across the planet, interacting and even interbreeding to a certain extent, 
Going back to our last common ancestor with Neanderthals anywhere from four to seven Gaian days ago. But we are getting ahead of ourselves, or is that behind ourselves? Let's see. The earliest figurative cave paintings, found in Indonesia, can be dated to around nine Gaian hours ago, which is also roughly when the earliest worked musical instruments appear, bone and ivory flutes from caves in Germany. So we've been interpreting the world and our place in it through art for at least that long. Going back ten Gaian hours, humans had by that time already reached Australia and established a thriving culture there, which is significant because even in those days of lower sea levels, this would have required a multi-day open sea crossing, making those ancestors of today's Aboriginal Australians and Papuans the first seafarers. Around 11 Gaian hours ago, we have the earliest direct evidence for the use of cordage, multiple strands of fiber twisted together to make a much tougher string. This particular piece of cord was made by Neanderthals, but early modern humans probably had this technology around the same time, since it's a necessary prerequisite to constructing watercraft, and would have been essential in the development of all sorts of sophisticated tools such as bags, nets, and rope. And at 12 Gaian hours ago, where, remember, each hour encompasses a duration of time equivalent to the whole of recorded history, we have the earliest unequivocal evidence for a symbolic graphical tradition, a collection of engraved ostrich eggshell containers discovered in South Africa. While there are a few scattered examples of even earlier possible instances of engravings, as well as decorations, such as pierced shell jewelry and abstract drawings, the engraved ostrich eggshells are unique in that the sheer number of them, as well as the variability of the markings based on a standardized repetitive pattern, suggest a consistent system of symbolic representation. In other words, a type of message or graphical motif. Not writing exactly, but conveying more design than mere decoration. These markings could have been used to express collective identities or individual ownership, in much the same way that emblems, logos, and trademarks are used today. And they speak to a transition in early humans' ability to think and communicate in terms of the representation of one system by another. Which in a way, is exactly what I'm doing right now in representing the recent history of our species through this clock metaphor. We can go back even further, of course. Now that we understand what can happen in a few hours of Gaia's timeline, what is it like to look back weeks, months, or even years? That's what I'm going to discuss in future videos. But to give you a taste of what's to come, just how far back does all this prehistory go? Well, the Earth formed around 4.54 billion years ago. To Gaia, whose heart beats at a rate of 80 human years every minute, that amounts to 108 years since the formation of the Earth, give or take a year or so. Life began on this planet soon afterward, perhaps around 100 Gaian years ago. A long time ago, to be sure, but not incomprehensibly so. It is my hope that thinking about the Earth's timeline this way brings it back into the realm of human understanding and helps us appreciate just when our present moment is situated in deep time.